What is the latter rain? The Bible uses this farming principle in ancient Israel to explain an end time event. Stay tuned to this video as I explain what this principle or concept of the latter rain in the end of time is. If you've not subscribed yet to our channel, then please click on the subscribe button on the bell and on all you receive the notifications when we upload new videos. If you would like to donate to the self-supporting ministry, then you're more than welcome to do so by using PayPal, become a member right here on YouTube, or become a Patreon or use the banking details for those of you who are in South Africa. I want to tell you about an amazing thing before I continue with this video. My wife created her own vegan recipe cookbook vegan cooking made easy this recipe book contains over 130 recipes and a four week meal plan this highly professional book is available in hard copy here in south africa and ebook for those of you who are overseas and the great news is if you buy your copy in the next two weeks then you will get for free yes my friends absolutely free and help series done by karen rose and my wife chantelle horn Karen Rose is a detox specialist, nutritional therapist, and she, with my wife, did this amazing 12-part series, including the following topics. Acid versus alkaline. Where do I start? How to make whole wheat bread. How to do cleanses. Garden herbs, weeds and things. How to make your own kitchen garden. How to make your own probiotics. How to look at your calories and how to boost your energy. All of this, my friends, you will get absolutely free if you order your book today. Whether you order the hard copy in South Africa for 399 Rand, excluding postage, or you order your ebook for those of you who are overseas for only $16.99, then you will get this free series called Wholeness, Mind, Body and Spirit, done by Karen Rose and Chantal Horn. This is a limited offer, only lasts for two weeks, so place your order today. Let's get into our video. In the Bible, it teaches us that ancient Israel, when they farmed, they waited for the early rain to germinate the seed after they planted. Then the latter rain would come and actually ripen the fruit before they could harvest. Is this an end time principle that the Bible highlights that we need to understand about something that God will do in the end of time? Well, I'm going to show you from the Bible. This is an amazing event that lies right in front of us. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 to 16, the Bible says, Then I looked and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. So here the Bible depicts Jesus sitting on a cloud, and he's got a sharp sickle in his hand. Why in the world will he have a harvesting tool in his hand? Well, this is symbolic language to show us what's going to happen. Verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So the Bible says the harvest of the earth is ripe. And Jesus is going to harvest the earth with the sickle. Listen to verse 16. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. The Bible goes further to say that the angels are the reapers. So the Bible says that the end of time, when Jesus comes, the earth will be ripe for Jesus to harvest the earth. It goes on to say that the, both the righteous and the wicked will be harvested. The righteous, the wheat, will be taken into the barn, as in taken to heaven. The wicked, the grapes, will be trampled underfoot. So this is what's going to happen when Jesus comes. For the harvest to be ripe, it means the latter rain needs to fall before the harvest is ripe. So if the harvest is ripe in a spiritual sense, it means the latter rain will happen in a spiritual sense. Let's continue this concept of harvest and what it means and what does the earth represent in this concept of harvesting. Matthew 13, 38 and 39. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. So the Bible says that when Jesus told this parable of a sower going out to sow good seeds, and an enemy coming showing 
tares among the good seeds. And the disciples asking, should we uproot the tares? And Jesus said, no, let them grow together. Then Jesus explains what this parable means. And he says, the field is the world. The harvest is the end of the world. And the angels are the reapers that's going to reap the righteous and trample underfoot the wicked. So the Bible says that the end of time, the end of the world is the harvest that is ripe. Before this, the latter rain must fall. Let's go to Joel 2.23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For He has given you the former rain faithfully, and He will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So here is a promise to Israel that God will give them both the former and the latter rain. The former rain to germinate the seeds, the latter rain to ripen the fruit. Now listen to what the rest of Joel chapter 2 says. He connects this with the end of time. Verse 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So very clearly in the spiritual context in relation to the former and the latter reign, the Bible says this is the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. The early reign and the latter reign represents the Holy Spirit that's being poured out. Isaiah 44 and verse 3, For I will pour out water on him who is thirsty, and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my Spirit on your descendants, and my blessing on your offspring. Very clearly, the Bible equates pouring of water or the rain that comes down to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In the spiritual context in the end of time, we should then expect a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit to, that ripens the earth before Jesus returns. This is an amazing thing. So when did the former rain take place? If the latter rain happens just before Jesus returns, when did the former rain take place? Let's go to Acts 2 verse 2, 3 and 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and the began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here at Pentecost, the early rain germinated the seed of the Christian church. And the ch Christian church was born from this amazing event. After Christ was crucified and ascended to heaven, the disciples took the gospel to the world. According to Colossians, it says the gospel went to all the world. Before the gospel goes to all the world again at the end, for Matthew 24, 14 says, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the world as a witness, and then the end will come. The end of the world is the harvest, according to Matthew chapter 13. So for the end of the world to come, the gospel needs to go to the world. For the gospel to go to the world, just like it did in the apostles' time, the Holy Spirit needs to be poured out again. And that's the latter rain. My friends, in front of us, there is a time of trouble. There are great things that's going to come to this earth that the devil is going to do. But God's going to do something bigger. The latter rain will be poured out. What an amazing event that will be. I hope that all of us will be ready to receive it and obey God today and walk in His will so that He can pour it out upon us. If you have learned something from this video, please leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not done so yet. And may God bless you and pray for our channel as we bring as much information as we can to the world before Jesus returns.